Hello, my name is Thomas Herlin and this video is the first in a two-part series on planning, cybernetics and socialism that I'm doing in collaboration with Paul Karkshat. And this first video is mostly about planning and uh, you know some of the history of this stuff and the politics behind it. Whereas the second video is more about the technical side and the computational side of all this. Uh, there will first be a presentation with slides by me, followed by a Q&A between me and Paul. Uh, and keep in mind the audio in the Q&A is a little bit bad. I've tried to make it better in post, but it's, it's not perfect. Uh, but with that said, on to the presentation. So, as I said, this talk is about planning, cybernetics and socialism. But first, who am I? And as I said, my name is Thomas Serin. I live in Umeå in northern Sweden. I have a master's degree in computer science. I'm involved in the free software world. And I started reading Capital around 2017, roughly. And while reading it, I started to notice similarities with stuff I know. So stuff like graph theory and differential equations. And I also realized that planning is quite a wide field. So it's more than just Gosplan, basically. Uh, my background is in, well, my day job is in broadcast video. So I do consulting around FFmpeg and the MXF file format and sort of broadcast stuff in general. So if people like what I do, then send clients my way. The contact information is at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'm also involved in the high-performance high computing world. And me and a colleague have released a tool called FMI Go, which is a tool for doing co-simulation. So th this is a way to connect different kinds of simulators together. And this turns out to be non-trivial for numerical reasons. And this becomes relevant in the technical part of this series. So uh, the general idea then of all this is uh, a bottom-up democratic planned economy where we let computers do the necessary computation for all this stuff and where we make everyone able to plan. We make everyone able to get their hands on the on the planning system and we can do this by by making it accessible over the internet of course and the way i've been explaining this lately to people is that this is the notion is roughly a, a, a wiki for production mm, we also want to have a lot of feedback systems in place so if something is wrong, we want the system to know about it. And this is where the, the notion of cybernetics comes in, which I will talk about uh, later. So, but first of all, planning, what is it? And planning is calculation in kind. It is calculation in physical terms. So the number of apples, the number of oranges, the amount of electricity, the number of hospital beds and so on. And Planning makes it possible to take basically everything into account. Um, everything that can be quantifiable, that is. Um, we can compare this to monetary calculation, where the goal is, is, is just profit. And everything that isn't profit is externalities. So we could also ask ourselves, why do we want to do planning? And one reason is that we can, in planning, we can do production for use rather than profit. And that means we can make stuff that lasts a long time. We can get rid of stuff like planned obsolescence, and, you know, annoying stuff like that. Uh, we can also put in stuff like explicit climate constraints. So we, we can say that, okay, we want the, the amount of carbon dioxide by 2050 to be below this level and you know be relatively certain that this would be the case we could also do optimization on the entire system so this allows us to do stuff like shortening the working week i will also note that this is not a uniquely marxist leninist uh, 
notion. So I've been trying re locally uh, to get anarchists and social democrats to look into this kind of stuff because it's it's important. So and the reason of course why it is important is because the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere keeps going up despite climate agreements. So the first agreement here is the Re a Rio agreement in 1993 and we we we're we're not doing better. We're in fact doing worse and this this is the market in action right here so I have some examples as well and the the one example we're all should be familiar with is the capitalist firm so in capitalism a firm is uh, they're all planned internally so you don't have, say, the HR department haggling with the engineers or anything like that. So it's all, it's all as one unit striving towards one goal. It just happens the goal is to generate profit, but, you know. Um, so the, the, the trade is really just the, the interface that's used between other firms. Uh, another example are ho household economies, so the family. And the go goal there isn't again it's not really to make money money is just a means to an end and the end being the well-being of the family and finally an uh, example that should be familiar to especially people of my generation and younger a uh, lot of strategy games Im involve planning so for example Starcraft or the Anno series or Banished or more recently Workers and Resources so it's, it's really all economic activity outside of trade. And to, to illustrate the, the video game point, I put in some screenshots from some of these games. Uh, so for StarCraft, we have three resources, mineral, gas, and control. And you need minerals and gas to build buildings, and you need also control to build units, uh, which you build out of the buildings. And <clears throat> the goal isn't to, the, you know, the goal isn't profit. The goal is to crush the enemy. Um, yes. Uh, second example is Banished, which is a, a survival strategy game where you have eleven different types of goods that you're producing. And so you're you're having your li little settlement and your your little villagers. And they're they're doing the various types of jobs and you're producing stuff like food and wood and clothes and alcohol and so on and every now and then you get a trade and mostly what you're trading for are seeds so that you can do farming and the goal again is isn't really profit it's it's to survive it's banished is a notoriously <laughs> difficult game everyone just dies very sad uh, yes, final example is Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic, which is a nation building sandbox. And in this game, things get quite complicated. You have something like 33 goods, I believe. And these are things like food and ores and chemicals, uranium and so on. And in the game, you're you're balancing sort of trade versus autarky so um, you you it's usually quicker to to just buy things but you only have so much money so it's it's cheaper to produce things like gravel in in your own little nation than it is to import it and to 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 import and export you're you're dealing with either rubles and dollars depending on if you're you're trading with the Soviet Union or with uh, NATO so you're kind of balancing these things and you, you can get very complicated uh, supply chains in the in the game so in the bottom right there's an example of building a small shopping center which requires some amount of work days and some amount of various resources and in you can either choose to have your your construction office build the shopping center which is effectively free but you're in that case you have to wait 
quite a while. You can also just, just buy it, uh, but that's that's a lot more expensive. So in in the game you're constantly balancing these kinds of kinds of things, and you're wanting to keep your citizens happy and well fed and clothes and computers and radios and all, all this stuff. So uh, a tricky little game. So those were were some of the examples of planning. Um, I also mentioned democracy, and we might ask ourselves, well, why? It's like we like democracy, but yeah, why? And one reason that's just practical is that if people don't have any say in the system, then they're going to get dissatisfied uh, in the system. And this dissatisfaction threatens the viability of the system and it, it breeds liberalism. So if people think that they'll be more free in the market, then the system is going to move towards a market economy. So that's, that's why we sort of emphasize uh, democracy. And what we're talking about here is, is actual democracy and not bourgeois fake democracy where you get to pick, you know, every four years you get to pick from one of eight parties, none of which represent you, unless you live in the US, in which case you have two parties, none of which represent you. So, <clears throat> yeah, democracy good. Uh, I also mentioned cybernetics. And um, cybernetics comes from the Greek, Greek word kybernetike, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which means uh, to steer or to navigate or to govern, and especially sort of a ship at sea. And it's a, it's a systems theory that emphasizes feedback loops. So on the right here we can see a, a centrifugal governor controlling a, a throttle valve in a steam engine. And you set the governor to, so that the system achieves a certain speed, a certain velocity. And <clears throat> the reason why this is relevant is because real life is very sort of chaotic and the amount of control that you have, the amount of levers you have to sort of push and pull are, are actually quite limited. So we, we can't really command people or, or the system in general to do things. We, we can sort of at best steer it. So this is just a, a sort of admission of that. So a real life example of some of these ideas being put into practice, that's sort of a, the classic example. Uh, is Project Cybersyn, which was a project in uh, Salvador Allende's Chile in the early 1970s, which uh, consisted of a bunch of telex machines, uh, so a, a teletype, so it's sort of a type typewriter and a printer all in one, uh, connected to a uh, computerized control center. And the system was set up in, in a sort of a multi-tiered fashion with four tiers where you want uh, basically e each, each tier in the system, each level uh, doesn't bother the level above it unless there is a, a problem basically. So as long as you, you don't hear very much uh, either good or bad that you know sort of things are flowing along smoothly. And uh, this is a very interesting project that unfortunately got scrapped in the, the coup 1973. So, but I've been recommended Eden Medina's book, Cybernetic Revolutionaries. So I will recommend it to viewers as well. I haven't read it yet, uh, but it's on my list, uh, my next order of books. Um, I have also theorized a little bit uh, myself how we might implement some of these ideas and I've done this in a post I call the building the cybernetic commune. And the notion here is of a, a sort of a, a parallel economy or a parallel base, which uh, seeks to keep labor to itself. And it also seeks to do things like withholding taxes from the bourgeois state, which is sort of an indirect result of keeping labor to itself. So you don't pay the people in the system of a money wage, for example, and uh, you're wanting the commune to, to grow 
and you can do this for example by exploiting weaknesses in the bourgeois system so if for example rent is high then the commune could choose to offer housing to members and um, I also emphasize a, a tit-for-tat strategy and this is a notion from from uh, game theory where you're trying uh, you never initiate hostilities so you you don't uh, you only defend yourself if you're attacked so in summary planning is calculation in kind uh, planning is necessary for dealing with global warming and we can do planning in sort of a bottom-up fashion where computers are useful but we should remember that computers aren't magic computers aren't people and this is where democracy comes in and democracy is very important for long-term viability of the system and really how we get there is an open question and you know people on the left all have different ideas of how we get there so you know that's the nature of the game uh, finally I thought I'd share this meme that someone sent me which I thought was funny which summarizes all this stuff yes so feel free to clip that and share with your friends uh, oh yeah and contact information uh, I should mention that the fastest way to get a hold of me is usually IRC and I typically I don't read comments on YouTube very often so it's, it's better to email me uh, comments and I'll be more likely to read and respond so uh, that's about it one of the things you say is that you're struck by the similarity that capital has to graph theory now i remember back in the 70s when i first did a computer science degree being struck by the similarity between graph theory and the idea of transition between modes of production what was the similarity you saw yeah so that's in the the way the firms connect to each other in the market so each each uh yeah, each company is a node and then you know every trade is a, a link in the graph okay yeah okay. so so that's that's also where you get the you know the the, the input output basically being sparse is because of these you know yes. okay trades. so there's a direct mapping between a graph representation and a sparse matrix representation there yes one of the things that seemed interesting to me is uh this idea or you hint at, you don't say it very explicitly, but you see it as something that could, might be done independently of the existing state. Yes. So this is this would be then quite different from the sort of Leninist approach, I believe. Uh, and the, the idea isn't really even so much cooperatives, because that's, you know, been discussed to death, but it's more about stitching together cooperatives and different kind of pre-existing things into you lift them into the planning system rather than you know thinking that you're going to interact with the market you help lift them out of the market uh, so but yeah right basically i, I say it's it's going to be easier if it's geograph geographically close yeah, yeah you can't have like a hundred people you have to have uh, you know ten thousand yeah, yeah. or a hundred thousand maybe if we could get the uh, Vesterbotten here where I live to do this then I mean th yeah okay greetings fly out to Asher scapegoat Stipcom general intellect unit Hakim Naoi, Non Compete, and Victor Magarino. Thank you for watching.